that terrific goal. You might laugh, but did you know that without plants, none of us would be here? Well, I can guess that. My mum's always telling me to eat my greens. Yeah, they keep us healthy as food, but they are also at the bottom of all food chains, which makes them absolutely essential for life. Who'd have thought it of these passive, flimsy green things? Well, that's not all. They also provide oxygen for the planet and for us to breathe. Well, how's that then? It's all part of an amazing ability that plants have to make their own food. Wow! Yes, it's called photosynthesis, and you'll be an expert on it by the end of this. Hmm. Can you show me on this little beauty then? Well, this is probably a good place to start. You should already know your way around a plant. This, of course, is the flower and is usually brightly coloured to attract the bees to pollinate the plant. Yes, we know. And those are the leaves, that's the stem, those are the roots, where I guess the food production takes place. Uh, not quite. You've made the classic mistake. No, plants take in water and minerals from the roots, but photosynthesis takes place in the leaves. In fact, the whole purpose of the leaf is to make its own food. You really do learn a new thing every day, don't you? And it's a good job too. That plants need energy from sun, and they wouldn't get any of it. Let's take a closer look at a leaf then, to get more familiar with it. Yep, I think we need to. The top outside layer of the leaf is the waxy cuticle and is waterproof. The layer of cells under here are called the epidermal cells and they make the wax which covers the leaf's surface. But hold on, why does a plant need waxy leaves? Oh, this is to prevent water loss, as water is critical in supporting the plant as well as photosynthesis. It's all clever stuff. OK, so we've got the waxy cuticle. And then we've got the epidermal cells. What's next then? Underneath these then are the palisade cells. These are highly specialised and designed for photosynthesis. So do they have special features then to help them do this? Yes. Look, the palisade cells are tall, which gives them a large surface area down the side. This is good for absorbing carbon dioxide. They're also crammed with tiny chloroplasts which absorb energy from sunlight to power the photosynthesis reaction. These are full of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll? This literally means green leaf and is the green pigment that makes our friends so green. OK, so far. Good. Moving deeper into the leaf, we come to the spongy mesophyll layer, or the middle leaf layer. This and the palisade above are full of air spaces that allow carbon dioxide to reach the palisade cells. Why do palisade cells need carbon dioxide, though? Because carbon dioxide is needed for photosynthesis to happen, but we'll come to that later. The mesophyll layer is also where the leaf veins containing the xylem and the phloem tubes can be found. Oh no, you've started talking another language suddenly. <laughs> no, I haven't. The xylem and phloem tubes cover the whole leaf and are basically the plant's transportation system. The xylem tube carries water up the stem and delivers it to all the parts of the plant, while the phloem tube takes the food produced by the leaf away and distributes it throughout the plant, just like the blood system in the human body. OK, panic over. Finally, the lower surface of the leaf is covered in tiny holes called stomata. These are surrounded by guard cells. They must be extra special, if they've got their own bodyguards. Silly. <laughs> Stomata are pores which open and close automatically when water from the roots begins to dry up. This is controlled by the guard cells. When there isn't much water, these become flaccid or limp and start to change shape, closing the stomatal pores. This stops any more water from being lost, but it also stops carbon dioxide from getting in, as we'll see in a minute. Plants can't photosynthesize without carbon dioxide and so photosynthesis stops as well. So now I feel like I know my way around a leaf. We've got the waxy cuticle, the epidermal cells, the palisade cells, where the photosynthesis takes place, the mesophyll layer, and finally, the stomata. But how does the leaf actually produce food? Well, the plant already contains water drawn up from the roots and the gas carbon dioxide taken in from the air. So all the plant needs now is sunlight. 
The chlorophyll in the leaves absorb energy from the light and with the help of carbon dioxide and water, a chemical reaction takes place in the palisade cells that produces glucose, or food for the plant. Luckily for us, oxygen is a byproduct of this. Right, so let me get this straight. It sounds like four things are needed for photosynthesis to take place. Water, carbon dioxide, chlorophyll and light. Absolutely right. Good. I'm glad I got that one sorted. But hold on a sec. That equation looks a bit familiar to me. Well, it's probably a good thing that it's familiar. In fact, back to front, it should be very familiar indeed. It's OK. You can tell him what this equation indicates. That's right. Respiration. I knew that. I was just letting someone else have a go. OK, then. So did you know that plants constantly respire, as well as animals? But that doesn't make any sense. Photosynthesis produces glucose and oxygen, and respiration converts it back again. So what's the point? The point is that photosynthesis, which can only happen when sunlight is available, produces oxygen and glucose, which enables respiration to constantly occur. Which in turn enable the other six life processes to occur. Sounds like we've come full circle back to Mrs Nerd. M-R-S-N-E-R-G. It's Mrs Nerd, so listen to me. And another important point is that plants are at the bottom of all food chains, which means that they're therefore the food for all animals. After all, glucose is, apart from being plant food, basically stored chemical energy. I see. So without plants and their stored energy, all animals would die? Yes. Make sure you know about photosynthesis for your exams and its relationship with respiration, because it's going to come up sure as the sun is shining. Phew, I'm glad that one's dealt with. Ah, but not quite, because you'll also need to know about the factors that affect the rate of photosynthesis. But it's OK, there's only three of these, and to make life easier, they're called the limiting factors, because they limit the rate of photosynthesis. Well, light has to be one of those, since it doesn't happen if there's no light at all. Absolutely right. And if we take a look at this graph here, we can see that the more sunlight there is, the faster the rate of photosynthesis, although there is an optimum rate of photosynthesis with light. So if light is readily available, the plant reaches its maximum rate of photosynthesis, then remains constant. OK, so what about the second limiting factor? The second variable is carbon dioxide. Whilst water is usually readily available, there's very little carbon dioxide in the air at the best of times. So does the rate of photosynthesis increase with the amount of carbon dioxide available? Yes. And if we look at our carbon dioxide graph, we can see that there is also an optimum rate of photosynthesis with carbon dioxide. So what's the third factor? The third limiting factor is temperature. So is there an optimum rate here too? No. Temperature is different. Generally, the rate of photosynthesis goes up with temperature. That's why plants in the tropics grow so quickly, because they're warm and light is available for most of the year. Plants in Britain and other cold climates stop growing in the winter because there's no light to photosynthesize with. However, take a look at our temperature graph. Can you see how the rate of photosynthesis suddenly drops to nothing once a certain temperature is reached? Oh, yeah. Well, this is because high temperatures actually start to destroy enzymes in the chlorophyll, rendering photosynthesis impossible. So how hot does it need to be then? Good question. It's usually around 45 degrees centigrade, which is very hot for outdoors and doesn't usually happen. But greenhouses can get this hot, so gardeners, beware. So that's photosynthesis. Plants making food so they can grow. I don't think I'll ever look at plants in the same way again. 